David here with Figboot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today I have for you a recently released pen in a series of four from Narwhal, and that is the Narwhal Voyage. More specifically, the Chicago model, available exclusively from Atlas Stationers, located appropriately enough in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, Chicago is a great city. It's one of my favorite cities to visit. It's a lot of fun. Uh, a number of years ago, I was visiting and wanted to check out the famous Billy Goat Tavern, which is a well-known bar and restaurant in the area. Uh, there are a couple of locations around the city, but I wanted to visit the one on Michigan Avenue. Uh, I had the address and was walking around Michigan Avenue, and I could not find it at all. I had the address, it was, but it was like the building was missing. I, I was kind of perplexed for a while until I realized that the tavern was located on Lower Michigan Avenue. Uh, if you're not familiar with Chicago downtown, there are several streets which are basically double-deckers stacked on top of one another. Uh, you have to take the staircase down to Lower Michigan Avenue. And let me tell you, uh, that was a rather significant staircase because there is a big difference between Michigan Avenue and Lower Michigan Avenue. Uh, it's a whole different world down there, uh, down that one flight of stairs. Uh, it's like the uh, Eloy and the Murlocs. Uh, if you understand that reference, then you have earned your worthless internet brownie points for the day. Uh, but the tavern was cool, and uh, it's a very important part of the culture and lore of Chicago, so it was well worth the visit. Uh, in regard to this pen, uh, what I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the Null Roll Voyage. Uh, I'm going to talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Uh, the pen arrives in this box. I've always liked the Narwhal logo. I think it looks kind of cool. Uh, and then inside there is the actual box on the outside. It says Narwhal Voyage. Inside we have a couple of things. We have a little one-page use and care guide, uh, as well as some information about McKinsey Penworks. More about them in a minute. But first we have a pen. This is the Narwhal Voyage. It's available in four different models, each of which pay tribute to a city. There is New Orleans, which has a very Mardi Gras look to it with purples and golds. Then there is the New York, which is comprised of whites and blues and oranges. Uh, while those are the colors of the New York Mets baseball team, it is also the colors of the New York City flag. Uh, then there is the Shanghai, which is a bluish gray mix. I don't know a great deal about Shanghai, so I'm not quite sure how the color relates to the city. Uh, but then finally we have the Chicago, which is comprised of blues and whites and reds, which like the New York model, pays tribute to the city flag. And here is the Narwhal Voyage Chicago. The other three models are available at a wide variety of retailers, but the Chicago is an exclusive for the Chicago-based retailer Atlas Stationers, who are kind enough to provide this pen for review. Uh, the pen is made from a custom resin by McKinsey Penworks. Uh, the material is their patented diamond cast resin, which incorporates real diamond dust in the material. Now, even though diamonds are very hard, the dust is added to the resin in a way that uh, still allows it to be manipulated by standard pen making tools. Uh, it really adds a level of sparkle and depth to the finished product. McKinsey Penworks is located in Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, they're only about a half an hour away from where I live, so maybe one day I need to make a visit to their facilities. That could potentially make for an interesting video. Um, I feel this is an interesting material and represents the idea of the city flag well. Uh, this model is similar in features to one that I had previously reviewed from Narwhal, the Primary Macchiato. Uh, let's start by taking a look at the cap. Uh, on the top, it is inlaid with a round piece of what I believe is gold-plated metal. Uh, then we have the clip. Um, I like the looks of the semicircular design, and it functions just fine in materials of varying thickness. The cap is straight, and then at the end we have a rather ornate band with the Narwhal company name surrounded by some splashing waves. And that wave motif is carried around to the backside of the band as well. Then there's a medium-sized step down to the barrel, uh, which begins with a generous ink window. Uh, the barrel is straight, and then at the end there's another gold-plated band signifying the beginning of the piston knob. And the end of the piston knob is rounded. 
The cap twists off with two rotations, and underneath we have a stainless steel number six size nib produced in-house by Narwhal. Um, I found their in-house nibs to be very pleasant. I've tested a few of them and experienced no issues. So I think that they're doing a good job with their in-house nibs. Uh, this nib is available in fine, medium, broad, as well as a 1.1 stub. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The section begins with a slight flare, then angles up until you reach the resin threads, which I don't find to be sharp or uncomfortable if your grip should rest on them. Then there is a medium-sized step up to the remainder of the barrel, as well as this ink window. Um, I feel this ink window is large enough to give you a really good look at your ink situation without taking anything away from the overall aesthetics of the pen. Uh, the cap of the Voyager does not post. Um, I like that it doesn't even fit on here, so there's no question whether or not it can be posted. On some pens, the cap like kind of posts, and you're left to wonder whether it's designed to do so or not, but there's no doubt with this pen, which is fine. Um, I do find it plenty long enough to use unposted. Um, I do care for the girth of this pen. It is a bit on the thick side. Um, it does feel substantive in the hand, but not overly cumbersome or heavy. Um, I mentioned the piston knob previously, but this is a piston filler. Um, I find the piston mechanism to be very smooth. Uh, and this large knob is very easy to grip, so it makes inking the pen very simple. The Narwhal Voyage retails for $150, which I feel is a reasonable price for what you receive with this pen. Um, it's very well constructed. Uh, it feels very solid in the hand. Uh, it doesn't feel, feel fragile or weak. Um, and I really like the piston mechanism and the ink window is decent. And as I mentioned earlier, the nib performs nicely as well. Uh, this is a limited edition series. Uh, the New Orleans, New York, and Shanghai models are limited to 500 pieces worldwide and are, like I mentioned before, available from a number of retailers. But the Chicago model is exclusively available through Atlas Stationers and limited to 300 units. I'll put a link in the notes below where you can check out this model on the Atlas Stationers website. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Narwhal Voyage Chicago. Just wanted to give you another closer look at that material. Uh, it's very interesting. It has a, a lot of depth to it and that I think the color mixing on that is uh, nice as well. In regard to a couple of other Narwhal models, uh, here it is with the Nautilus with its unique portholes. Uh, then this is the Schuylkill. Uh, and then here is the original Demonstrator. In regard to some non-Narwhal pens, here it is with a Twisby Diamond 580. Uh, and then here it is with a Lamy All-Star. And then finally, here it is with a Pilot Prera. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, here it is with the Lamy All-Star. Uh, here it is with the original Demonstrator. And then here it is with the Twisby Diamond 580 that I actually need to clean a little bit better. There's a little bit of ink residue in, in there, but that's what it looks like in comparison to the Voyage. So the ink that we're using today is Diamine 1864 Blue Black. Uh, when I started with the fountain pen hobby, I, at, to begin with, all I had was black inks. That was all I was interested in. Uh, and then I got really crazy and I ventured out to a blue black. And this was my very first blue black that I purchased. So let's go ahead and ink this pen up. And it's going to be a little bit of an odd angle, but we can just simply open up the piston and go ahead and put it in here and then let's go ahead and wipe the nib off and you can see here now you can see that there's ink in there through the ink window let's go ahead and shut this off okay here we go with the writing sample for the narwhal And this is the Voyage Chicago. 
Uh, this is a medium stainless steel nib. And as I had mentioned before, the ink we're using is Dianmine. 1864 blue black uh, this is what the ink looks like uh, you could see I was really going crazy here this is a very uh, dark blue black so it's almost more of a uh, kind of a black with three drops of royal blue in it so uh, it really wasn't stepping that much out from black uh, this is what it looks like in regard to a couple of my other favorite blue blacks, uh, Diamine Midnight. I kind of prefer that one a little bit more because it has a little bit more blue in it. And then here it is with Bung Box 4B. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Um, I mentioned previously, but um, I've found that these Narwhal in-house nibs have performed very well. Um, you can't get a lot of line variation out of here, but I will say that they're smoother than I expected. Um, they perform very nicely. The ink flow on them is decent in regard to reverse writing. It's very smooth. I almost say it's smoother on the reverse writing than it is on the standard writing. And then in regard to some fast writing. The feed keeps up just fine. So yeah, I think that Narwhal has done a really good job with their in-house nib. So here we have the Narwhal Voyage Chicago. Uh, like I mentioned, I'll put a link in the notes below where you can check this out on the Atlas Stationer site. I think that all four of these city models of the Voyage look rather interesting uh, and just bring something a little bit new to the table. So they're worth checking out. Okay, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.